Hey, good evening. Welcome to the Excellent Church, Georgia campus. This is our Sunday Jesus Encounter. My name is Pastor Desmond Peacock, and we are excited that you are here. Before we even get into praise and worship, this is what I would like for you all to do. Go ahead and like, tag, share, put somebody in the comment section. Let's, if you know somebody's going to be blessed by tonight, please do us a favor and tag them right now. And let us know where you're coming from as well. Comment in the comments block. Let us know where you're viewing us from. And if you're excited, let us know you're excited. Before we get into praise and worship, also, what I also like for you all to do is grab something, grab some cookies, go grab a, grab a piece of bread, a cracker, some juice, something that you want to represent Jesus' body and his blood. Because following praise and worship, we're going to be conducting communion. All right. So without further ado, because I'm going to get out your way, because I want to go ahead and get involved in praise and worship myself so get out your seats and let's praise and worship together praise and worship team where you at let's go come on let him hear you come on let your worship be heard by the king 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 yeah it am I yeah Let's do it. You give light. You are love. Come on, say it. You bring light to the darkness. Yeah. You give hope. Come on, lift that up to the Lord. You restore yeah. every heart that is broken. Come on, say Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. So we pour. Can we do the verse one more time? Right here. Yeah, for you. You give life. Come on, sing it. You are love. Come on, church, say it. Bring light to the darkness. You give hope. Yeah. You restore. Yes, you do, God. Every heart that is broken. Say, great are you, Lord. Right here, say, it's your breath, it's your breath, in our love, in our love, so we pour out, so we pour out. Oh 
Jesus, come on. Lift up your voices right here. Lift up your voices right here. Yeah. Lift up your voices and give them glory. Ooh. Hey, yes, sir. We bless your name tonight. We bless your name tonight. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. Come on, I need a radical worship right here. Hey, we give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. Come on, we give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. We give you glory. Hey, we give you glory. It's your breath. Hey, so we pour out.
It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. 
So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath. One more time. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We give your name all the glory and all the honor. It belongs to you and only you, Father. And Father, we vow tonight, Lord God, that as long as we have air in our lungs, we will give you all the glory and all the honor, Father, because it belongs to you and only you. We give you all the praise, Father God. There's nobody like you, Lord. You woke us up in the morning, Father. When you created us, you breathe your breath, Father, into our lungs. So we give it back to you as a sacrifice of praise tonight, Lord. And in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare, Father God, that as we breathe in your life, Father, we will breathe in a new and renewed spirit, a new renewed mind, a new renewed characteristic, a new renewed deeper relationship in you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for what you're doing. We praise you for what you've done. We clap our hands right now, Lord God, and say bravo and say bravo, Lord God. Do it again, Jesus. And we give your name all the glory and all the honor in jesus name we pray and god's people say amen 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 you may be seated at, at this time if you have if you have the uh your communion if you have your crackers and your juice at this particular time frame we have some some of our hospitality team is going around and uh, giving us some uh giving our congregants our partners in the house tonight and they are in the house tonight with grabbing uh, their communion, some coffee, some coffee. I say coffee, Jesus. You know, hey, that could be your communion as well. You can you can uh, point that out, and you can make that your your you can make you can make that Christ blood tonight. So listen, um, I want to thank you all for joining. Thank you all for joining. Can I get a little music in the background, uh, musicians? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Listen, we are excited tonight. We are glad that you are here. Um, we are glad that you are participating in communion with us. You know, here at the Excellent Church, Georgia campus, every first Sunday, we take the time to commemorate the reason why we are here, the reason why we are free. Okay, but you don't have to wait until every first Sunday. You can give, you can conduct communion as much as possible as soon as possible whenever you feel deemed and necessary because what it is go ahead do that can you pass it around for me because whatever because communion itself father i mean father communion itself men and women of god is is just you reestablishing your covenant with your savior and you realizing the reason why you were here and the reason why you were saved the reason why he saved you and why he saved you so if you don't have your stuff now please go ahead and grab some grab whatever you want it can be soda it can be juice it can be water it can be coffee like i said earlier okay and for your bread it can be crackers it can be bread you know it can be whatever you want to to commemorate and to represent christ's body amen amen pastor jerica is going to join me do we have our crackers babe we got our i didn't grab mine i'm sorry work as a team just 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 no nice to it no, of course not why would i get in well if i get in trouble i'm going to ask god for forgiveness and then this is just going to be a better way to come you know reestablish my covenant my connection with my lord and savior i i, I use it personally he's my lord and savior but uh we're gonna go ahead and get serious okay um so I'm going to read a passage from scripture. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 26, and I'm going to read verse 19 through 20, and then I'm going to read verses 26 through 30 in the King James Version, okay? And it says, And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it, and break it and gave it to the disciples and he said take eat this is my body so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna 
whatever area whatever item you have as the bread i'm going to go ahead and bless over that bread now father in the mighty name of jesus we thank you for your blood we thank you for your body right now we thank you that your body was broken for us we thank you that you gave your only begotten son as a sacrifice for us lord god so father we thank you right now and as we take eat of this bread we know that it's an establishment of a new covenant and connection with you and re-establishment of the covenant and connection with you and father before we even take part in communion father i pray that every individual if their their heart is not right if they feel that they have sinned father i pray right now that you forgive them of their sins now as they establish this new covenant with you as they come into the communion with a clean heart we thank you for forgiving them father in jesus name we pray and god's people say amen go ahead and take me And he said, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my body, I'm sorry, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I'm going to go ahead and pray over the, the item that you have that you're representing as, as God's body, as Christ's blood. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, that you shed your blood for us. We thank you, Father, that once again, your body was, was a representation of the sins of this world. And you had to sacrifice your body in order for us to be saved, in order for us to be cleansed. So, Father God, we pray right now that as we take part in this, in this cup right now, as we drink this juice, water, whatever we have that is rep representation of your blood, that, Father, you do a new thing in our body. You rejuvenate, you renew our body from head to toe. And we thank you for the healing. We thank you for the restoration. We thank you for the renewed mind and spirit. And God's people say, amen. Drink ye all of it. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. I'm going to say one last prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to share communion with you, Father, to commune with others. And Father, we are stepping out on faith right now that our mind is renewed, our focus is on you, and we thank you, Father God, for reestablishing this relationship with you and this vow with you. And we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for sacrificing your son for us because you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. And for that, we are eternally grateful. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it all. And God's people say, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So I'm going to go ahead and get out your way because uh, Pastor Jerrica Peacock is going to be coming with our announcements. Amen. Praise God for her. started our declaration um, of what is it called of our tithing on how we give and so we're going to go ahead and start with prayer father god in the name of jesus
are in your car, whether you are sitting in front of us, whether you are in your bed, Father God, bless them where they are. Meet them where they are, Father God. We all need you. We all wish we can be with you, Father God. We want more of you. We want more of your presence, Father God, because when we are in your presence, Father God, there is nothing but joy. There is nothing but breakthrough. There is nothing but miraculous healing. There is nothing but just everything good from you. but we are having more coming. Hallelujah. Yes, Father God. All right. So, as always, we have two events coming up. And if you missed the 12 a.m. prayer pursuit, you want to go back and look at it. You can make it. <laughs> you can make it. If you can stay up, you can make it. If you really want to be a part of it, you can make it. 
So I would say set your alarm for 11.50 and 11.55. I say that every time because let me let me tell you, I have to do that. Because <laughs> I'll be asleep. And, you know, just God forgive me because I keep pressing that mute button, that, that snooze button. And by that time, I wake up in the middle of prophecy when Desmond, uh, Pastor Desmond be um, saying a word. But Pastor Desmond does an amazing job. He is seeking God's face daily. So when he says that his prayer life is a 7.5, I feel like it goes up higher because he's been doing this consistently. <laughs> All right. So go ahead, 12 a.m. prayer pursuit. If you missed the last one, go ahead and look back at it and make sure you're ready for the next one. And Monday morning, we have the Excelling Kids Morning Prayer. Yes, yes. 7.45 and 8.45 in the morning with me, Pastor Jerrica. Just go ahead and log on. Your kids will be blessed. You will be blessed. I pray over you. I pray over the children and the kids. Learn how to pray and seek God yes. at an early age. Yes. 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 Don't we need that? Don't we need to do that yes. now? Yes. Start them while they're young. That yes. way they know where to go. Train up a child. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. right? Yes. All right. Now, lastly, who is ready to sow into the kingdom? Amen. Not sow into to the Excelling Church Georgia campus, sow into the kingdom. Yes. There's a difference. Amen. There is a difference. Amen. Because when you sow into the kingdom, work is being done. Yes. Yes. When you sow into people, well, God is working on them. All right. So there are three ways to give online, fast, secure, and easy. You can text to grow, yes, grow, not give to 706-535-7123 or you can cash app to the money sign excelling ga or the zelle account the excelling church ga at gmail.com those are the three ways you can give yes hallelujah <laughs> go ahead we'll give you a few seconds for that and actually while you're doing that we're going to go ahead and read our church how you say it not our church confession our proclamation, our declaration. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Let's stamp that. Yes, yes, <laughs> All right. Yes, yes, yes. Ready? Let's, um, if you could, look at the screen. <laughs> All right. I'll read it for you. Ready? Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive blessings that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack. Knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How y'all doing? How y'all doing this evening? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise because y'all are here this evening. Amen. 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 I'm happy. Are y'all happy y'all here this evening? Yes. I'm going to say it one more time. Are y'all happy y'all here this evening? Yes. 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 I'm, I'm, listen, I, I'm, I'm very, very excited because we have our partners in the building again tonight. Yes. 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 They are in the building tonight. And we got some special guests in the building tonight. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Listen, I, I, I don't want to put them on the spot, but I just got to put them on the spot. Listen, listen, uh, my, my, my people say people say brother-in-law, sister-in-law, you know, you know father-in-law. I, I, I like to say I like to say sister in love and father in love. So my father in love is here tonight. Pastor Jerrica's father is in the building tonight. Let's give God a hand clap of praise because he is here tonight. He is here tonight with and and, and he brought his special friend, uh, uh, his special lady with him tonight as well. Oh, wait a minute. Do I see? Wait, wait a second now. Wait, I see something on some ring fingers now. Wait a second. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm just listen. I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to preach tonight, boy. Okay, okay, but he, they are in the what the, what what those rings mean? They they commitment. Woo! Yes, yes, lovely lady, his lady in love right now. Helena is in the building with us tonight as well. We thank God so much for y'all being here. Listen, they drove all over the world. They they they, they, they drive trucks. So they drive all over the place. So they could have been in, in Idaho right now. But they decided to make yeah, I said Idaho. It's a state. I mean, truck drivers, they drive in potatoes. They probably wanted some potatoes, you know, probably wanted some potatoes. But they drove. <laughs> She's looking at me. But the thing I love about it is they could have been anywhere. So when we, when we make that comment and we say that to you all online, that you could have been anywhere, but you decided to be with, her, with us tonight, they are a prime example. They could have been anywhere anywhere tonight but they decided to be in the building they decided to be amongst a body of believers they decided to be here at the excelling church georgia campus and we're blessed we are blessed we are humble we thank y'all so much we thank y'all so much because we understand your schedule we understand how busy it can be but you decided to make a sacrifice and god honors God honors your sacrifice tonight. So I truly help. I truly believe. I pray. I pray that God that God does wonders for you all tonight. I pray that he uses me in a mighty way to touch your lives and you're blessed in more ways than one. Yeah. So just sit back, relax. I, I know you're already in the presence. So the go Holy Ghost is already here. Yeah. So we don't even have to worry about saying we hope you get into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is already set. Yeah. We just pray that you all stay in tune and and you're blessed in a mighty way. Man, I, I love it. I love it. My I, my family is in the room tonight. They are in the room tonight. So if you saw Pastor Jerrica blushing, you saw her face a little rosier than usual, and she was smiling a little more than usual, it's because her daddy is here. Love my daddy. She loves her daddy. You know, he's here. So we are, we are so excited. And, and I got to also give a shout out to the rest of our partners that are here in the building tonight. We love y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Okay, we truly believe that the Excellent Church Georgia campus is growing. Not only are we growing naturally with manpower and, 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 and body of, in the body of believers, but we are growing spiritually. We are growing. Our relationship with God is getting stronger and stronger. I truly believe it's getting stronger and stronger every single time we meet. Every single time we come together, God is doing something amazing. God is doing something amazing. And like I said before, it just shows that when you're in his will, mm -hmm. when you are in God's will, mm -hmm. things just happen for your favor, but for definitely for his glory. Yeah. And he, he, he basks and he loves when his children, not only do they sacrifice for him, but they live for him. 
and he enjoys that and he marvels in it and there's nothing but good that can come to you so we thank y'all so much and thank you all for viewing wherever you could be right now i know we got people from texas viewing we got people from north carolina south carolina even in the beautiful state of georgia viewing tonight we thank y'all so much let us know where you are from right now put it in the comments block let us know where you're where you're meeting where you you know you could be in your car looking at us or sitting in your at your desk or you probably in bed but you're looking at us on your phone we thank y'all so much and because you did it i guarantee you tonight God is going to do a special thing in your life and I decree and I declare that things are just about to start changing even as I speak things are going to start changing in your life not only for your life but for your family's life and for the people that are connected to you things are about to start changing I decree and I declare it in Jesus name amen 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 so as you all know we started our series last month and we started the series called The Traffic Light, okay? The Traffic Light. So those of you that are looking at the traffic light in front of me, we are a church of illustration. We love to illustrate our messages. So whenever we get the opportunity to get something that, that's a visual, you know, to kind of not, I wouldn't say break it down Barney style, but more so give you something, give you something that we're looking at, give you an object in reference to you trying to use your imagination. That's what we'll do. OK. And this was actually a word that God gave Pastor Jerrica. God gave her this word a couple weeks ago. And when I tell you, when God gives Pastor Jerrica a word, the way she prepares for a sermon as opposed to the way I prepare for a sermon is two totally different ways. I mean, I got to be in an office. I got to be the, I can't have no distractions, the, the, I can't even have music playing sometimes. I need to be really focused, right? But Pastor Jerrica can have the, the TV on, the kids can be running around, she can be in the bed with her laptop open and her Bible next to her and then a phone next to her. And before I know it, within, within possibly like an hour or so, she has a message done. Yes. How does that happen? Yes. I look to God's voice. I, yeah. Yes, we know yes, that. I do, honey. Yes, we know, honey. Thank you so much for putting that out into the atmosphere. We all know. <laughs> we all know that you listen to God. Yes, God. But it's just funny to me that it, it happens that way. And so God gave her this word. And as and if you all uh, saw her when she preached this sermon a couple weeks ago, uh, she what she broke down was she broke down this traffic light. And it's amazing how. In the sermon, she talked about her dad in the message. She talked about her dad in the message, and here he is tonight. I don't think y'all understand it. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all let that go over your head. Y'all let that go over your head. It, it's like she spoke him into an existence knowing that he was going to be here tonight. I, I, I'm just, but yeah, I don't know. May, I, I'm, I'm already there. Maybe it's going to take y'all a little bit more time to get to where I'm at right now, thinking wise in the atmosphere. But I just feel something crazy about to take place tonight because it's, I don't, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in happenstance. I believe in ordained, divine, orchestrated arrangements. And I truly believe that tonight God is going to do some awesome things. I just hope I get through the sermon, you know, but if, if God, just did he, if he decides otherwise, he decides otherwise. But she talked about the traffic light and she broke it down. She broke down the colors. As we all know, when we see a traffic light, we know red means to what? Stop. Red means to stop. Yellow means to what? slow down we're talking about the traffic light now i know y'all was i know y'all heard the sermon before so y'all probably gonna give me the notes that y'all heard no no don't give me the notes yet don't give me the notes don't give me the notes so we know regular if we look at a stoplight we know the stoplight the red is to stop the yellow is to slow down and the green is to what yeah. go okay and when she talked about the stoplight she talked about she talked about our thought processes when we run up on a on a red light as opposed to us running up on that yellow light as opposed to us running up on that green light right and then she broke it down which was so awesome to me she broke it down to the to, to the realm of us as believers and she started talking about how we get anxious when it comes down to how we just want to move we want to go like it, we, we, and, it, and it's hard for us to to slow down or we, 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 we think about things and 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 it was amazing how she brought it well into until pretty much a, a full round circle as to us understanding. Sometimes you got to wait on God. 
Sometimes God is going to give you something immediately. Sometimes God won't give you something immediately. But it's up to you to, to discern whether it's God telling you to move or whether it's you telling you to move. So that's what I got from it. That, that's what I got from it. And, and, and you know, she, like I said, she brought up her dad and how he's a truck driver and, and how uh, he, it was a specific story that she talked about, about how uh, 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 the, I guess, what, what was the big deal about speeding and as, opposed to, uh, as opposed to going over the speed limit and then as opposed to actually going the speed limit. And what was so crazy to me was that she told him, now, now correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor Jerrica, what she said it was something to the degree, and I'm paraphrasing, that he told her that speeding, you're actually wasting more gas. Okay, y'all, y'all let that go over your head again. Yeah, you let that go over your head again. You know, when 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 you're speeding, you're wasting gas, right? So what he what what she said he would do is he would be driving on the road and he would see these cars zoom out in front of him. Some cars would even try to cut him off, right? And they'll take off. Right. And then he'll just be trucking along. He'll just be trucking along. Why? Because he knows he can't speed because it's against the law. Right. But it's also even more against the law for him because he's driving a truck. Right. And so there's a lot more damage that could happen if he were to get into an accident. So he already has those things in his brain. So he's sitting there. He's driving the truck. He's trucking along. Yeah. These cars are zooming, trying to get in front of these trucks, but they're speeding. So if they're speeding nine times out of ten, they're they're wasting more gas. Right. And so she said that dad would sit there and say, well, I'm going to pass him up anyway because he's going to end up pulling over into a gas station. So if he pulls over to the gas station, I still got like a full tank or half tank of gas left because I've been I've been steady, moving steady. I've been rock steady. I've been staying the course. So if I stay the course and I don't speed nine times out of ten, I'm going to have enough stamina. I'm going to have enough in me to stay the course because this isn't a race. See, that's what I got from it. And, but, but then what she said, he's, he, what, he, what would happen is she said that the, the people at the gas station, that person that was zooming in front of him and trying to speed, he would actually be pumping his gas, look up and see, his, and see her daddy in the truck driving past him. <laughs> and she said, Daddy would do one of these numbers. I got gotcha. you. And so they would try. And so the person that, that, that saw him driving past, they would try to hurry up and put gas in their car to jump back in the car and try to catch up to him. They're wasting more gas while Mr. Steele here is staying the course, keeping it rock steady, keeping it under under 65 miles an hour. So when I thought about that and I and I and I let it I let it fester, I let it sit in my in my soul. I, I, I was like, wow. I don't think I don't think Pastor Jerrica really, really, really understood the the magnitude and what she was saying just in the just in the description of her father and how he was driving. Excuse me. <coughs> and not only how he was driving, it's not COVID. Sorry, I'm good. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's definitely not COVID. But just a little bit, just a little bit. But and how he was driving. But the crazy thing about it was, it's like the people who, were, who would try to get in past him to try to get to their destination first and get to their destination first. What they ended up doing, what they ended up doing was getting to a place to where they wasted, they wasted more. How can you say it? They wasted more supplies or they wasted more energy. They, they, they wasted more uh, substance. They, they, they wasted more, more fuel or they wasted what I call more um, What's the word? Somebody help me. Uh, resources. Thank you. They wasted more resources to try to get to a to a to a finish line. But if you just stay the course, if you just use what you have, you ration what you have. There's a strong possibility you will get to where you're going, and then you'll still have stuff left over when you get to the destination you're trying to get to. Ain't that something? Mm-hmm. Excuse me while I clear my throat. I'm going to cut my mic off right quick while I clear my throat because I want y'all to hear what's about to happen. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Sorry. All right, okay, so, 
So when we looked, when I looked at that, that whole entire thing, I was like, okay, God, what do you want me to talk about tonight? Because Pastor Jericho laid it out. And I, and I honestly felt that we didn't need to talk about it in a series. So God was like, no, son, I want you to talk about that traffic light. Get a little bit more deeper into it. So I said, okay, God, what do you, what do you mean by get a little deeper into it? Because like I said, my wife did it. He said, no, I want you to talk about a specific color on the traffic light. I said, okay, God, what, what color you want me to talk about? He said, son, I want you to talk about the red light. I want you to concentrate on the red light. So tonight, men and women of God, as we, get, as we continue with part two of our series, The Traffic Light, I want to gear your attention towards the red light for tonight's message. We all know that when we get to a stoplight, red means to stop. Yeah. It's self-explanatory, right? And in our lives as Christians, there are often times where we just need to stop. Yeah. There are often times in our life as Christians, we just need to stop. So my subtopic <laughs> for the topic tonight is the traffic light. You just need to stop. Once again, our subtopic for tonight is the traffic light. You just need to stop. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again tonight, Father. I pray right now that before I even continue moving in this, Father, I pray that as I decrease, you increase in me, Father. I don't want to utter the words unless you give it to me, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray right now that as we speak, as we go through this, Father, that not only do you take over the atmosphere, but you rule it for your glory. Lives are saved. Yokes are broken. Chains are taken away, Father God. Lives Lives are saved and lives are delivered. And most of all, your body of Christ is empowered tonight, Lord God, in the mighty master's name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So our scripture reference for tonight, real simple scripture, because you know, Pastor Des, when I like to give scripture references, I, I, I do a lot of scripture references. <laughs> but tonight, God wanted it to be simple. He said, son, don't be so much in the nits and weeds tonight. I want you to be simple. So we're going to go to Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version and the Amplified. So Psalms chapter 46, verse 10, and it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. When you read it in the Amplified Version, and let's, let me let you know, you can read it in whatever version you want to read it in tonight, okay? I'm just going to read it in these two versions. But when I read it in the Amplified, I love how the Amplified breaks it down just a little bit more. It says, be still and know, recognize, understand. That I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Like I said, it says, be still and know. In quotations, it says, recognize, understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So, as you know, your pastor likes to break things down, okay? I like to look in things at different levels, all right? So when I look at that first, the first two words in that, in that scripture, it says, be still. It says, be still, okay? So look, if you, if you got a space partner next to you when you're viewing this, go ahead and look at your space partner and tell them, be still, if you're, and for those of you that are in the building, go ahead and look at your partner right now and say, be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Say it one more time. Be, be still. still. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Not, not still like your last name, Dad, but still <laughs> as an S-T-I-L-L. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but when I looked at that be still, I broke it down. And so I looked at be in the verb tense. Be in the verb tense is to exist or live. Be in the verb tense is to exist or live. Still means deep silence and calm. Stillness. 
or I love this one, not moving or making a sound. Not moving or making a sound. I have a question for those of you that are viewing and those of us that are in the room this, this evening. What is the biggest challenge as us, for us as Christians? What is one of the biggest challenges for us as Christians? Pastor Jerrica says patience. Anybody else got anything? Quiet. Being quiet. Patience. Being quiet. What else? Anybody? All right. I'm going to give you some. <clears throat> I feel... Yes, focusing. So sitting still, being still, like you said, patience, being quiet, otherwise being silent, waiting, waiting. I truly believe that even though I said some things that may kind of may kind of uh, correlate with one another, our biggest issue is those things as Christians, because if I knew that I was getting what I pray for. Or if I knew that if I prayed for this today, I knew probably a month from now I was going to get an answer on what I prayed for. Nine times out of ten, I would conduct myself a little differently. I would be moving a lot differently if I knew when the answer was coming. When the blessing was coming, I knew I would move a little differently. But in today's society, in today's generation, in, in our body of Christ. Period. As long as I can remember, even looking back in the Bible days, I don't think no one knew exactly what God was going to do. I don't think no one knew when he was going to do what he was going to do. Matter of fact, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scripture in the Bible and I'm paraphrasing that, you know, no one knows a day or time. No one knows a day or time. Right. So we don't know. We don't have a clue. Only God knows. And the craziest thing about waiting as us, for us as Christian is the, the unknown. The unknown why we wait. See, it's different if I'm waiting on my vehicle to get the engine oil change. Because I'm sitting, I know an engine oil change will probably take anywhere between 15 minutes to 30 minutes, depending upon where I'm taking it. So, and I know that if it gets a certain time, I'm going to that dealer, or I'm going to that maintenance man, knocking on the, on the desk saying, hey, I've been here X amount of hours. All I was getting was the engine oil change. Where's my car? Right? But it's different with God because God's not going to give you a time frame. God's not going to say, well, you may get a prophetic word and they'll say by this time tomorrow. But by this time tomorrow can mean you can get it bet between any time, that entire time tomorrow. Right. Yeah. So with us as Christians, the unknown is the biggest issue. Why I'm waiting. And, and I'm going to give you some examples of the unknown. God, I, I know you said you will provide, but I, I'm still lacking something right now. Or God, I, I know you said you have it all under control, but I'm still going through something right now. Or God, I, I know you said my child is protected, but they still went to jail, Father God. I don't understand. Or God, I know you said that, that, that I will be healed, but I'm waking up with this pain every morning. I'm going to sleep with the same pain every morning or God I know you said that I will move into this new house but for some reason they keep prolonging my closing date or for some odd reason I, I'm, I'm not getting the house that, that I desire to get or I'm still in this apartment and I have five kids and all I have is a one room apartment God you said I was going to move but I'm still sitting stagnant or God you said you will do a new thing in me but I still feel like the old me It's the unknown. It's the unknown. We got a good word. We shouted. We danced. We were great. We, we, we felt relaxed. <laughs> we got home. And then we woke up. Sunday was great. <laughs> some, of us, some of us live in church on Sundays. Some of us going, I'm sorry. Sorry if I offend the Baptist community, the, Pente the Pentecostal community. I love it. I, I grew up in it. So I know I would be at church some anywhere between 8 o'clock in the morning. And sometimes I wouldn't come home until 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock that evening. I spent all day at church. All day. But see, in, in this instance, some people spend all day in church because it's, it's, it's home to them. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's solitude. It's a sacred space. I feel better when I'm in church. I feel better when I'm amongst the body of believers. I feel better when the preacher is up there hooting and hollering and, and saying this and saying that and it's feeling good in my spirit. And, and, and I just want to stick around things. But church has to close. 
The doors have to close. The doors have been closed. So what happens when the door closes and we go back home? I wake up the next morning and the things that I decreed and I declared or the things that I shouted about on Sunday or the things that I I, I nudged my neighbor and said, God is going to do it. Now I woke up and I'm like, God, are you really doing it? Is it really happening or, or am I still sitting in the same predicament? But what if I told you? Men and women of God, what if I told you that in this season, for some of us, for some of us in this season, your B, otherwise known as your existence, in this hour is still, otherwise known as not to move or make a sound. What if I told you that in this season, for some of us, your existence in this hour is to not, is not to move or make a sound. Your existence in this hour, in this season, is not to move or make a sound. Pastor Desmond, what are you talking about? Not to move or make a sound? I'm supposed to make a joyful noise to the Lord? Or he lands. That's what it says in the Bible, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You are supposed to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Or ye lands. <laughs> you are supposed to serve him with gladness. You are supposed to do that. I'm talking about in this hour, in this season... Regardless of your current situation, regardless of who's talking about you, <laughs> regardless of who's trying to set you up for failure, regardless of who told you no, regardless of who told you, I'm sorry, but that position has already been filled, regardless of who told you, you don't meet the proper qualifications, regardless of those who told you, we're going to ride this to the end. I'm your ride or die. We doing this together. And they never even sat in the vehicle when you put the car in drive. But instead of you getting back at them, instead of you saying something, instead of you responding the way you really want to respond, you in this season, your objective is to sit back, be still, and don't say nothing. What if I told you that some of us in this room right now, you got somebody, you, you just, all they got to say is one more word. All they got to do, just, just look at me differently. Just look at me different. Matter of fact, if you say good morning, it's a problem. But what if I told you that person that you are, you are ready to just swing on, God is going to tell you not to do nothing. God tells you don't do nothing. You be still. Because in the Bible it says, be still and recognize and understand that I am God. You're not God. You didn't create God. God created you. So he's telling you to be still. So, so Pastor Dez, well, what are you saying? I'm, I'm just supposed to sit back and do nothing? Ah, I, I'm supposed to just sit back and, and be, and be what, what, what I used to call myself at one point before I was, I was spiritually chastised by my spiritual dad, Pastor Terrence Nolan of the British Church of Alabama. I love you, Pop. I love you, Pop. Okay. I, 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 I said being a doormat. Uh, so we tell me I'm, supposed to be, I'm just supposed to be a doormat? I'm supposed to let people do what they want to do to me? I'm supposed to let people say what they want to say about me and I don't say nothing back? Exactly. Thank you, Lonnie. I'm, you supposed to let you supposed to let people punk me, challenge my gospel, gangster. Really? And I ain't supposed to do nothing. Nothing. My gospel, gangster. I don't wear this hoodie for nothing. You see it? You see I'm in all black. You know I'm ready to put in work. You heard me, right? Sound a little bit like DMX a little bit right there, but. God rest his soul. But check this out, though. Listen, we've all been in that position. We've all been there. When it's like, I, 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 I just want to do something. I just want to put a hurting on this dude. I just want to put in some work. I want to, I can't stand it. And in that very moment, you hear a voice. <laughs> and that voice is telling you, son, be still. Daughter, be still. Daughter, don't say a word. Son, walk away. He's like, walk away? Why am I walking away? I, I don't want, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, let's explore what you should do. Let's explore. 
If we look at Psalms 46, verse 10, and we look at it in the Amplified, it says, Be still and know, recognize, understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We have to recognize who our daddy is. We have to recognize who our God is. We have to understand what our daddy is capable of. I don't think y'all really understand what I said. We have to recognize who God is. In that moment, we have to recognize who God is. In that moment, not only do we have to recognize who he is, but we have to understand what he's capable of doing. What is he capable of doing? Let's think about a, a, a parent relationship from a parent or relationship standpoint, right? You know, we, 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 we got, our, we got our, 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 our covenant relation, relationship partners in the building. We got some married folk in the building, okay? So, and I know we got some married folk that are listening, and we got some people that are in some covenant relationships, right? So, let's just say, um, and let's, let's, let's just say in the covenant relationship, let's just say you're walking somewhere, right? And, and you're, y'all, y'all are having some, a nice dinner. Y'all are chilling, having a great time. And let's just say somebody decides to try your significant other. Mm-hmm. Let's just say somebody tries to try your significant other. Let's just say in this point, somebody is trying to try the, 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 the wife or the, 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 the female in the relationship. What do we do as men? Ah, uh-uh, chill out. I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we already laughing because we already know. We already know what's about to happen. We already know what's about to happen. Somebody trying my wife? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to do that there, partner. Somebody trying my, my lady, the one, the one that I'm caring for, the, the one that I'm protecting, right? Go, go ahead. S- step aside, sweetie. I got this. Well, what do we say? We say that, right? Now, I don't even worry about it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I, I, I'm going to take care of it. And what, 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 do we, what, what do you all do as women? What do we do as women? Oh, well, I, I, well, hopefully the woman, the woman will sit there and be like, they'll step back. But while they're stepping back, they're telling their husband, please don't. We don't need to get into that. We're fine. See, what my wife does to me is she'll let me know, babe, what happens if you get into a fight and and that person kills you? Like, I can't be the person to beat the guy up. I can't be the person to be the victor. I got to be the one to be the victim. I can't be the victor. I got to be the victim, right? So in her infinite wisdom, that I don't know why. That's that's what she feels. She feels I'm going to be the one, you know? But I'm stepping my wife aside. I'm saying, I got this, babe. And what do we do as men? We protect our ladies, right? Okay, so if we look at that, and we did exactly what we were told because we knew, or let's just say if, let's just say if we were little, right, and we got parents, parent-child relationship, and somebody is bullying your child. Somebody is bullying your child on the playground. Somebody is bullying your child. Matter of fact, let's just say we're in Walmart and something happens in Walmart and somebody, somebody says something wrong about your child or about something and your child or even teenager, the teenager want to get big and it's like they talking about me. What do you do as a parent? Step aside, son. I got this. Yeah. Um. Step aside, daughter. I got this. Don't even worry about it. Don't say nothing. Haven't we we said that? Don't say a word. I got this. Be still. Mm, I got this. Be still and recognize who I am. I got this. Be still and understand what your parent is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. I got this. And what do we do as children? What do we do as teenagers? I want to do it, but I'm going to step back. Because I know what my daddy's capable of doing. He's capable of of turning his whole place upside down. I know what my mom is capable of doing. My mom is capable of burning this entire place (laughs) down. And I'm just going to sit back and watch. Because this person has no clue what they stepped into. 
some high ranch sit boo boo. Yes. They done stepped yes. into today. But I have a question. So why don't we take the same stance when it comes to our God? God. We have doubt. We have doubt. But, 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 but the crazy thing about that is, and I, li- I like what you said, Mr. Still. I like what you said. One of the reasons why we don't take that stance is because we have doubt. But I have a question. Why, why, are, we, why are we doubting our creator? Why are we doubting our God? Why are we doubting the God that, that already told us the outcome? He already told us the outcome. See, in many cases, your enemy never knows the outcome. Your enemy will never know the outcome. Your God already knows the outcome. All they know, all your enemy knows is what they contributed to at that very moment. That's all they know. That's all your enemy knows. All I know is at that very moment, I said something to offend you. All I know is at that very moment, I said something to offend your loved one. All I know is at that very moment, I did something that pricked your spirit, that did something to your feelings, that did something to your brain, and now you're off focus. But God is telling you, be still and know that I am God. Why? Because God didn't say, I may be exalted among the nations God didn't say depending upon how you get out of this I may be exalted in the nations God said I will will meaning it's happening even now will meaning regardless of the outcome of what happens between you and this individual I'm still coming out on top so you need to decide what side you're going to be on The doubting side or the knowing side? What side are you going to be on? So just think about it. If we as parents, (laughs) my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. If we as parents ever had our children when they got to that point where it was time for us to protect them. And if we as parents ever got to that point and said, okay, step back, I got this. And your child was like, no, dad, I don't think you should do it. No, mom. You shouldn't. My, what, what happens? Or what if they took the same stance that Pastor Jericho took with me? What, what, what happens if you get into a fight and they kill you? What, what happens if you get into an altercation and you're the one that, that they beat up? What do you do as a parent? What do you do as a loved one? What do you do as a, as a husband? What do you do as a wife? What? Do you realize who I am? Do, do you realize who, what, what I'm capable of doing? Do you realize what could happen in this instance right now? Look at this person and look at me. Do you honestly think I'm losing this battle right now? So let's think about that. If we take that stance as human beings to other human beings, why are we not taking an even bigger stance related to that with our creator? When somebody does us wrong. When we have to sit and wait on the outcome, why don't we sit there and say, while I'm waiting, I know my God is still going to be exalted among the nations. I know my God is going to end up knowing. I know he's going to win. I know I'm going to come out victorious, regardless of the situation, regardless of what may be coming my way right now, regardless of what may be coming my way tomorrow. I know I'm still victorious because I am the ch- I am chosen of the victor. The victor chose me. He didn't choose nobody else at this particular moment he decided to choose me see sometimes us as Christians sometimes us as men and women of God we have to stop thinking that when we're going through something that's treacherous when we're going through something that we don't like when we're going through something that's uncomfortable we have to stop looking at it as God is punishing me we have to stop looking at it as here I go again I just can't get stuff right sometimes we got to look and retrain our thoughts and say okay God you chose me to go through this so because you want me to show out and show off for you so I'm going to go through this thing You chose me to go through this thing right now. So, God, I thank you for choosing me to go through this conflict because what you're trying to see is how I'm going to conduct myself during this storm, how I'm going to conduct myself when people are coming my way or how I'm going to conduct myself when I pray and I sit and wait. You're going to see that. You're going to want to see what I'm doing. You're going to want to see what I'm doing. You're going to want to see how I'm moving. 
You're going to want to see if I'm going to keep the same faith I kept on Sunday morning. You're going to want to see that. But see, but if you are still, your light is on red, as we know that. Your light is red because you're still. And you're allowing God to move. His light is on green. The ending will result in your winning. Because you don't have the power to overcome the things that God can overcome for you. So when he's sitting there telling you to be still, be still and let your dad do exactly what he said he was going to do. Be exalted. You're going to come out on top. But I'm going to flip things for you tonight. Because God put this in my spirit. And I truly believe that once you hear what I'm about to say, a lot of us are going to take a step back and say, you know what, God? I truly apologize. I truly apologize. But some of our blessings, some of our breakthroughs, some of our, some of our, our rejoicing times, you know, we sit there and we see people in these testimonies and they testify about how God did these awesome things for them. And they testify about how they was praying and, and how they were allowing God to do it. And, and they were steadfast, unmovable. And they just woke up one morning and bam, it happened. Or they were driving and then something just took place. Or they ended up going into a job and, and they got a promotion. And you're looking at that and you're like, wow, that's, that's awesome. So we rejoicing for them. And you're saying to yourself, but God, well, what's going on with me? And, and when, I, when I was looking at that and I was viewing it, God said, son, some of, our, some of my people's blessings aren't on the way. Some of my people's blessings are not on the way. They're, they're held in, in purgatory, I would say. They're dangling. And I'm like, God, wh why would you say that? Why would you say some of, some of the blessings you have for your child, your children, aren't on the way? They're dangling. He said, because, son, some of my people's blessings aren't on the way because they've gotten in my way. Some of your blessings are not on the way because we've gotten in God's way. Let that sit. You're sitting and wondering why things aren't happening the way you want it to happen. You're sitting and wondering why the prophecy isn't being fulfilled. You're sitting and wondering, God, I, I, I'm going by the book. I, 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 I think I'm doing it. I think I'm doing exactly what I'm doing, but the blessing isn't happening. Ask yourself, are you in God's way of the blessing? Are you trying to rush God in the blessing that he said he was going to give you? Are you trying to? Are you trying to move so quick to the point where you act as the blessor instead of the blessee? Since you said, God, I was going to move into this house, I see this house right here, and, 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 and that's exactly what I want. So, and you told me that, that if I see that house, to speak it, and it's mine. So I speak that house, God, and it's mine. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go to the lending office, and I'm going to take out this loan, and I'm going to go into that house. I'm going to make my, my mortgage broken, all that stuff, and we're going to get this happening, and I'm going to move into this house. I'm going to move into this $550,000 house, God, because you said look at it touch it and it's mine but I'm not gonna wait on you to give me the guidance into moving into the house that I'm supposed to be in I'm not gonna wait on your guidance that when I point at that house and say God instead of saying that is mine and I'm moving saying God that's my house but I'm gonna wait until you give me the signal God this is my job but I'm gonna wait until you give me the signal that this is where I'm supposed to be God, this is the job that I want, but I'm going to wait until you give me the signal because maybe it's not my season to be in that job. Maybe it's not my season to be in that house. Maybe it's not my season. This is probably why. Oh, my God. This is probably why you're having problems with closing. Wow. Woo, Jesus. This is probably why you're having problems when it comes down to getting the job application and, and, and you're, you're trying to get the, 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 the interview. And for some reason, the, the Zoom call is jacking up. This is the reason why that when it's time for you to, to get that car and you got all the money saved up and when, it, when you're driving to the, to the dealership, something happens to, to your house or you got to take that money and put it someplace else. We're looking at this differently, men and women of God. Maybe it's not your season right now because if you were to get that $550,000 house and you were to move into the house, 
maybe you really wouldn't have the amount of money it takes to mortgage the house. Or maybe if you move into the house, maybe have we ever thought about housing taxes or have we ever thought about the fact that it may go up this year and you don't have enough to, to, to suffice the money that it's going to go up? Or did we ever think about if we were to get this job? And yes, it's the dream job of our life, but it's keeping us away from our loved ones. It's keeping us away from our promise. It's keeping us away from God because I'm so focused on trying to get this job done. I'm so focused on trying to get the suspense statement. I'm so focused on trying to be the best that I can be for my boss. I have forgotten who placed me there. We need to start thinking differently. I'm telling you this right now, and, and I use this as I use this as a um what would we say I will use this as a testimony. I use it as a testimony. So I don't know whose phone that is, but maybe it's their season. I don't know. <laughs> it may be their season. <laughs> it may be their season. So it was one morning, and I told myself I had set myself up that night. I had set everything up. I said, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm knocking into things. Devil, you a liar. So I said, I'm going to go, and I'm going to get my stuff together because that next morning, I got a whole schedule of things I need to take care of. And I need to handle this stuff now because come Sunday, I know I'm going to be in church. But I need to handle it Saturday, right? So I get outside, and I look at my truck, and it's on a flat tire. When I tell you my day was crushed, Pastor Des, why was it crushed? Uh, it's a flat tire, and it's a flat tire of a pickup truck. It's, it's those one of those tires. And so when I look at the tire, I'm like, okay, maybe it just needs to be plugged, and it'll be good. No, because whatever, whatever plugged it, plugged it on the wrong angle, now I'm going to have to get a whole tire. So now I'm looking at, oh, my gosh, my day is completely over with. Because what I wanted to do, I could not do. So I ended up calling a friend of mine. Actually, I think a friend of mine called me. And he was like, Dez, what's wrong with you, man? So I started telling him, man, yada, yada, yada. I got all this stuff planned out. I can't make it happen because now I got a flat tire. So now my whole entire day is shot. He said, brother, look at it this way. What if God was trying to protect you from something on that road? What, 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 what if God knew that the enemy had a trap? Planned out for you and for you especially. Yeah. Yeah. But instead of you running into that trap, God raised a standard. He put up a buffer against that attack. Because, see, like I said, the enemy doesn't know what God has planned for you. All he can do is, is attack what he's used to when it comes down to you. So if I can attack Desmond's mind then and get him completely crumbled and can get him completely vexed off of something little like that then 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 I got him or if I can set something up on the road because I already know Desmond is is a thinker I already know he's a strategist so I know he's going to want to hurry up and get in that truck and drive nine times out of ten he's not going to be paying too much attention because he's going to have the music playing and then, and then he's probably going to have the windows down but he knows he has to get someplace at a certain time so if I set a specific mat truck at a specific area that that person isn't paying attention on a cross street I got him God sees the attack happening he says you know what I'm gonna place a nail in his tire so my son can't even leave his house but see we look at it as an inconvenience but we don't want to stop and be still we don't want to stop and be still so even in that moment I'm still trying to rush I'm still trying to get on the road. I'm still trying to figure out a way to get to my destination. I didn't want to be still in that moment and realize that God had a bigger plan for me. I didn't want to sit still in that moment and realize that God is still going to be exalted because he protected his child from the enemy. I looked at it as an inconvenience. Stop trying to rush God. Stop trying to rush his answers. God, you, you, you're you not moving fast enough. Mm. Some of us said that in this room. Yeah. 
Some of us have said that in this room. Some of us have said that viewing. You said to yourself, God, you ain't moving fast enough. It's month two. I'm still in the same predicament. Uh, I, I need this to happen now, God, not later. Uh, I'm tired of this person talking about me. I'm about to take matters in my own hands. I'm tired. I'm tired of turning the other cheek. I'm tired of it, God. I'm tired of being somebody that I feel people are just rambling and, and stomping all over. It's time for me to be who I need to be. I need to be a man. I need to show these people that I'm not to be played with. I need to be respected. And the whole time God is saying, be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Or let me flip that. Or we are hesitant to move. We're hesitant to move. Means God gave us a word to move. God gave us where to go. God has given us our calling. This is what you are to be in him. And, but, but we decide that the, the assignment it, that he's given us is it, too rough. It, it's too hard. That's not something I'm ready to do right now. I'm too old. I'm too old. God, you wanted me to be a pastor. I should have did that in my 20s. What? Not, not going on 40. Not going on 50. God, God I, I, I can't do that. Or the road that he's given you to the assignment is way too dangerous in your mind. So you decide to go another way. You decide to go another route to get to this calling that God has called you on. God, I don't want to go through ministry class and, and serve and clean and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go research some things online because I can be an ordained minister online. I, I, I could take a class or something. I can get, actually get an ordained ministry license online. I don't need to go through what, what, what my pastor is saying I need to go through. I don't need to do that. I, I, I can do it this way. I, I don't have to go that road. Well, let me show you what happens when you take matters like this into your own hands. Come here, Jonah. Where you at, Jonah? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, Jonah. If you don't know the story of Jonah, I'm going to give you a, 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 a quick one, two, three. Jonah was a minister. And, some, and, and I believe in the, in the Bible, they, they mentioned him as being a prophet. Was a prophet. Mm -hmm. So all my prophet and prophetess, let the real prophet or prophetess please stand up. Because we're talking about you in this area right now. But I'm just using this Jonah as an example. God gave Jonah a command to go to a specific city and let them know that they need to change their ways. And if they don't change their ways, wrath is coming. God told Jonah to do this. He didn't tell a church to do this. He didn't tell 12 disciples to do this. He didn't tell uh, 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 this man that's built and he's strong. He didn't tell a man that was big as Samson to do this. He told Jonah. So Jonah was like, no, wait, no, 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 no. Have you seen Nivea? Have you seen that city? They crazy. I go up in there talking about they need to change their ways. I may not make it out. It's too hard. It's too rough. I don't want to do that, God. I, I'm not ready for that. So instead of going the way God told him to go, instead of the way God told him to go because he felt it was too much, he decided to take a, another detour. He decided instead of going through Tarshish, he decided to go another way. He decided to get on a boat and go a whole other way. While on this ship, something happened on this ship. <laughs> While taking that self-proclaimed route, his ship was wrecked. Mm -hmm. While his ship was wrecked, somehow or another, he found himself in the belly of a whale. After all of that moving around, not listening to God, doing his own way, he still found himself being still. I don't, ooh, are y'all listening right now? Are y'all listening right now? And in that moment, as he felt himself being still, he realized what he should have done in the beginning. See, God is going to put you in some places that if you don't listen or if you try to go the, 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 the easy route or what you think is the easy route, he's still going to set a standing in place just to bring you back to earth and realize who your God is.
See, some of us are in our be still periods right now because we decided to make a decision that wasn't in God's will. <laughs> Jesus, we realize now that, oh, my gosh, I, 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 why, why isn't this stuff happening the way it's supposed to happen? Or why am I seeing my friends to my left and my right? They're pushing forward and I'm still sitting stagnant. Why am I sitting in the military and I see my men to my left and my right? They're getting promoted. They're getting pinned. And I'm still sitting at the same rank. Why is it that I'm, I'm, I'm in a body of believers and my brothers are, are that God is seeing them and pushing them up, up, up the ladder of ministry? and I'm still an usher why is it God when you told me what my calling was why am I still sitting here if you took a moment and realized why if you took a moment to sit back and tell yourself man what am I doing to place myself here instead of asking God what are you doing God why am I still here ask yourself Desmond what am I doing that is not in God's will that he is forcing me to sit still and listen, he is forcing me to sit still. He's forcing me not to move. He's forcing us. See, sometimes when God calls us to be still, it ain't due to the enemy. It ain't due to somebody else. We give the enemy way too much credit. Oh, that was the enemy. That was, that, that was the enemy. That, that, that was nothing but the enemy. That, that was nothing but. We always like to say this. That was an attack from the enemy. I sense the attack from the enemy. Why? Because you ain't moving. Because you, oh, Jesus, because you're not having your way. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you're not having your way is against God's will, which is a sin, which would be what the enemy wants you to do. So why would it be an attack from the enemy when you're doing exactly what the enemy wants you to do? So you're actually sensing an attack against your own creator because you're not in his will. Sometimes it's our own disobedience. That forces us in a still place. They're saying be still. The crazy thing, I looked this up and in the King James Version, this word be still is mentioned seven times in the King James Version. Seven times. I'm like, wow, wh wh what does that mean? Seven times it's mentioned. What that means is we're got, we have to remember this in our brain regardless of what we're going through, regardless of what's happening. Some of us have to be at this red light. And some of us have to stay there at this red light. Some of us, we you know, when you're sitting at that red light and, 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 and you know, it was, some of these red lights, you just sit there for too long or you feel like the light is broken. And, and, and you, see the, you see the vehicles that uh, they got the greens, they're going in front of you, they're they passing by you. And you're like, man, this, I've been at this light for too long. What is going on with this light? And then you try to inch up because you're thinking if you inching up, the light going to turn green. <laughs> You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it does turn green. Sometimes, sometimes it does turn green when you're inching up. But think about what you're doing when you're inching up. You're forcing something to happen that's not supposed to happen at that time. Oh, God, when you find yourself itching and you're, you're trying to move and you're trying to get to that place, you're, you, you don't, you're, you're fidgeting, you're, you can't be patient, you can't sit still because you're not used to being still. I tell my wife all the time, baby, sit down. You're doing too much. You're all over the place. It's in her nature. But there are times where you just have to sit still. There are times that regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of the house not being clean, regardless of the kids being all over the place, regardless of you wanting to meet a suspense date, or regardless of you needing to get in this truck and be at that particular moment at that particular time, or you know you need to be there, there are times where God wants you just to sit still and listen to him. Because he has something to download into your spirit. But if you're not listening, if you're not still, you're going to miss it. And then when you miss it, like I said before, you then have to start all over again. Because God, is, he's not going to give it to you. And, and, and he's, not, he, he's, he's not going to give it to you when you disobeyed him. So he's like, okay, you disobeyed me this time, so I need to test you again. Because you failed the pop quiz. So now I need to give you another quiz. So you know how we may have gotten like six wrong and you need to get in order for you to get in order for you to pass the test, you need to get, let's just say, let's just say in order to pass, you gotta get eight right in order to pass the test, but we only got seven right. Is the teacher gonna give you that same quiz and let you take it over so that way you can get those last three right? 
or is she going to give you a brand new quiz? Give you a brand new quiz. And then during that waiting period, what are you doing? Say it again. Studying the same stuff. Waiting for that teacher to give you another quiz. And then the great part about these quizzes now, they're not the same questions. Or the questions are in different order. Woo! God, see, sometimes, I hear you, Holy Spirit, when you fail the pop quiz, you're going to take it again, but it's not going to be in the same predicament. It's not going to be in the same motion. It's not going to be in the same area. It's not going to be the same person. It's not going to be the same air. It's not going to be the same atmosphere. It's not going to be the same state. It's going to be a different situation. And in that different situation, then you have to realize how you're going to conduct yourself. Are you going to be still? But let me tell you what happens, men and women of God, if you are still. If you are still, if you listen and you're being still and you're realizing and recognizing who God is and what God is capable of doing, those provisions that you're looking for is going to happen. Those provisions you were looking for God to give you is going to take place. That situation you wanted God to take control of, he's going to take control of it. That covering that you needed from God for your child, guess what? Even though he's still in prison, God's going to cover him. That healing that you desired, you're going to feel that healing. Even though you may still have to take medication, there may be days where you may forget the medication and you forgot it because for some reason you're feeling good. If you sit still, if you sit still, that, that property that you've been waiting on, instead of you having to run out and find a mortgage broker and a lender, they're going to find you. If you are still, if you are still, okay, that feeling of the new you, all these things will be taking place. You're going to wake up a brand new person. You're going to wake up not wanting to do the old things that you used to do. You're going to wake up not wanting to think the same ways you wanted to think. You're going to wake up not wanting to move in the same ways you wanted to move. Because you are still and God is depositing some things in you. How many of us have ever seen somebody get operated on while moving? Have any of us ever seen somebody get operated on and they're moving? You have to be still. You are in a comatose state. You are asleep, deep sleep, while the operators, the doctors are cutting you open, doing what they need to do. Oh, God, somebody answer this question. What happens if you ever saw somebody that was being operated on, and they were moving. Whoo, say that again, Lonnie. We put them deeper to sleep. We put them deeper to sleep. But before, we, but before the doctors even get to that place, they're monitoring that body. They're monitoring that patient to see how they, so how they were su succumbed to the actual medication. So they need to know if they need to kick it up a notch, or they know when it's time to move in. See, some of us being still, God is looking at you. And God is seeing, okay, you're not being still enough, so maybe I need to kick it up a notch. Maybe, I need, maybe you need to be here a little bit longer. Amen. Woo! God, you're not still in this moment. So since you're not still in this moment, I'm going to keep you there a little bit longer. I, 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 I'm going to let you sit in that one-bedroom apartment with five kids just a tad bit longer because you're moving ahead of me. Or I'm going to let this promotion sit. And I, I, may even, I may even let it cut you a little bit and let, your, let that person who you feel was, 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 was a sorry piece of whatever, yeah. they get picked up and they get promoted and you sitting there like, now I know I'm a better person than that guy. I know I perform better than that person. And God is like, you didn't pass the test. You were too busy moving when I gave you the anesthesia to be still. So now we got to kick it up a notch and you got to sit still just a tad bit longer while I operate on you. Hmm. All you need to do is be still. That's all we need to do. That's it. That's all we need to do is be still. There's a lot of us in this season right now just because of our generation. Just because of the way we were brought up. We want things now. We're willing to wait, but we can't wait that long. We, we don't want to wait that long. Because if I wait that long, I, 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 may, lose, I may lose interest. Woo! God! Jesus! Woo! God! 
if I wait too long, I may lose interest in it. See, some of us, we feel that, oh, my God, some of us have waited so long or some of us feel that we've been in this still position for so long that we've lost the reason why we're sitting still. We don't want to do it no more. So I've given completely up. And now we're at a place where the enemy sees that. And this is when you give him the glory. This is when the sense of the attack actually happens because the enemy is sitting there waiting on you to give up because he knows that you're big on that. He knows that you're never going to ever finish anything you start. He knows that you're not consistent. He knows that when the going gets tough, you get running. He knows that all I need to do is get him on filtered or unkiltered for one second and everything that he's worked for he forgets about everything that she's worked for she forgets about everything that she that they're going for all i need to do is give them one thing i just need to put a demon i just need to put a spirit of doubt in their circle and once that spirit of doubt is in their circle guess what happens they forget who they are they forget whose they are they forget whose their daddy is capable of doing they forget they're even chosen by their father. They forget that they're even a part of the spiritual bloodline and God has chosen them because they're doubting their situation. But if we can just be still and while we're still recognize and understand that God is who he is and he's going to be exalted among the earth. He's going to be exalted among the nations. So check this out. If the man that chose me, if the God, the father who chose me to be in his kingdom, if he's going to be exalted, if he is going to be pushed further in the earth, is he, if he's going to be victorious in the earth, what do you think that makes me being a part of his bloodline? I step into the same victory because I realize who I'm related to and I know who my God and I know what my father is capable of doing. So in doing that, I'm going to step back and allow my God to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to just wait. But how many of us are willing to sit there on that red light? How many of us? How many of us, see some of y'all ain't even going to look at red lights anymore tonight. Y'all going to keep looking at that light. God, you want me to sit still? <laughs> you want me to be still? I'm going to be still. Some of y'all ain't going past that red light no more, aren't you? <laughs> oh, God. So, oh, that's another one. I, we got to go. Because some of y'all passed the red light even though God told you to be still. Y'all saw that red light. You saw it turn red and you said, you know what? I got to get to my destination. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this. Ain't no cops around. I'm going to go ahead and pass this light because I, I got too much things on my brain. I'm already, I'm already running late. Woo, God. Jesus. I'm about to lose this earpiece. My God. I'm already running late. I'm, I'm already, I, I've already been, I, I'm already too late in, in my calling. I'm already too late in what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I, I'm already, I'm already clocking 40 and I see ministers that's been doing this over 20 years and now they're turning 40. I can't sit and wait anymore. I, I don't, I don't have time to waste. I got to keep it pushing. I got to keep it moving. And so I go past this red light and in going past the red light, I still miss what God has for me. I miss that particular moment where he's pouring into me so that way I can get to the level in which I feel I need to be. My God. Jesus. My God, my God. All you need to do is be still. All you need to do is be still. You just need to stop. You just need to stop. You just need to stop. That's all you need to do in this season is stop. In a place where everything is go get it. In a place where, in, in, in a season where all you hear is, I'm grinding and I'll stop and I'll sleep when I'm dead. Or, or, or you hear in, in a season where it's, 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 it's good to be that person who's grinding 24 seven and not taking the time out for himself or his or her family. My God, let me tell you something. Woo, let me leave it alone. Because I'm going to get some people upset when I make those comments. And I got I to gotta stop. I got to reel myself back in. You, I just need to stop sometimes. So Pastor Des is going to stop. 
And I'm going to allow what God has already imparted into your spirit to take hold tonight. So for those of you that have listened, that have heard, what I want you all to do is I want you to join me tonight in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Father God, for the traffic light. We thank you, Father God, for using that red light as a method for us to be still and recognize who you are and also to understand who you are and understand who and what you're capable of doing in our lives and in our situations. So, Father God, I decree and I declare that every single person that, that may be battling battling the opportunity or battling the, 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 the action to sit still. Father, I pray right now that something stirs them up in their spirit. I pray right now that your Holy Spirit take over right now and give them a new outlook as to why they're sitting still, as to why they have not moved, Father God. In the name of Jesus, if it's something they're not doing, Father, give them what they're not doing, Lord God, so they can change their mindset and continue moving. Father, impart into them, Lord God. Pour into them the things that you want them to do, Father, the vision, the guidance, and also waiting on guidance. So, Father, if that's what you want them to do, Father God, give them the sense of peace that they're in a waiting period because it's okay to be in a waiting period. It's okay to sit and wait. It's okay to sit still while you operate on us, Father God, because there are some things that are not in your will. There are some things that's not pleasing in your sight. And in order for you to operate on us completely, we have to be still. So, Father, we thank you for the operation. We thank you, Lord God, for extracting what's not like you and putting in what's like you. And we thank you, Father God, for stitching us up with your Holy Spirit and making us renewed, making us rejuvenated, and making us empowered, and healing us from the inside out. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now for those of you that may, those of you that may want to give your life to God, I would be remiss if I did not afford you the opportunity, anybody, the opportunity right now that feels that they need to be in a place to where they recognize who God is and they want to understand what he's capable of doing in their lives. If that is you, or you knew what God was and you knew what he was capable of, but you were a little bit too impatient to wait. So you walked away from the stillness and you also walked away from him in the process. You can change right now. You can refocus your mindset. And the great thing about our operator is that he's always ready. You don't ever have to call and wait on him to show up. He's always on clock. He's always clocked in, ready with the scalpel <laughs> and the anesthesia. So if that's you, if you want to give your life to God tonight, or if you want to rededicate your life, all you have to do is repeat this prayer of salvation after us. You, can be in, you, can be, you don't have to be in the four walls of the church, but you, all you have to do right now is just... It's just re repeat this prayer of salvation after us. So if that's you, repeat after me. Say, Father God, you know my life and you know how I've lived it. Father, I, I repent right now of my sins. I ask that you forgive me. Wash me clean with the blood of the Lamb. You said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins, but on the third day rose with all power in his hands. And I believe that in my heart that I am saved. So Father, I believe that at this very moment, I am saved, bought with a price. That price was your son and his shed blood for me. So I vow from this day that I will live for you and I will be still in this season if that's what you called me to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. 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 
Amen. If that was you, if that was you, and if you got saved, please give us, let us know, give us a wave or something. Let us know in the comments that you got saved tonight. Amen. Um, if you would like to be a partner of this ministry, you love what you see, you love what, you're, what, you've, been a, what you've been witness of, what we're doing right now, our social media team, they are putting down the form. If you want to join and be a partner of the Excellent Church Georgia campus, you can do that right now. If you desire prayer, whether it be in person, whether you want us to call you up, or whether you just want us to put, on, put you on our prayer wall, our social media team is all, also dropping down that, that jot form to fill out a prayer request form, and we will pray for you. We will pray for you. And last but not least, if you want to be a part of the Excelling Church Georgia team, you are a partner of our ministry and you want to become a part of our team, trust and believe you have that opportunity tonight. We're also dropping a form in the comment section. You can fill out that form. And Pastor Jerick and myself and our First Touch team will reach out to you and we'll celebrate with you. Amen. 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 Don't forget this coming Thursday. This coming Thursday, we will, we will continue on with our series. I forgot what our series was that quick. Lord have mercy. Help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me. You know what it is. I forgot. But it's happening. Our midweek service this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Okay? We love y'all so much. We love y'all so much. Pastor Jerrica has something to say because she's coming up with the mic. I'm going to go ahead and give her the floor. Why not? All right. Hello again. I am back. So we have a little bit surprise for you. I know y'all been waiting for this. But the surprise is... We will not be here next Sunday. Love's imprint is not going to happen, so I'm so Aww. sorry. But you can rejoice because we're going to be having in-person service for the first time in Columbus <laughs> at the Double Tree Hotel. So meet us there. No, no, I take that back. Beat us there. Yes. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be just amazing. On Mother's Day. Yes. Of all days, Mother's Day. What better way to celebrate your moms and yourself Amen. than Amen. to be in service. This Amen. is going to be amazing. So we cannot wait to see you guys next Sunday. We will see you Thursday yes. here. But we can't wait to see you next Sunday at the Double Tree Hotel here in Columbus next to, well, at Airport Thruway, Exit 8. You'll see so, the flyers. It'll yes, come out soon. It's what, we, it's what we call our pop-up services. You don't know where the Excelling Church Georgia is going to be. We're going to be at the, at the Double Tree this coming Sunday. We may be someplace else next Sunday. You don't know. You got to follow but us. You got to follow us. And you got to look out for them flyers. Look out for that, for that promotion. But you'll see the flyers here pretty soon. Well, that was all that I had to say. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that is the big surprise. We are going to be doing pop-up services to see where Columbus is at. You know, you can join at any time. Just be a part of the service. Feel the atmosphere. And just listen to the word that, you know, God has given us. Yes. And you don't also have to be in Columbus. You can be in the Tri-City area. If you are in the Tri-City area. If you are in Atlanta. And you want to come down. If you are in, if you are in Alabama, and you want to come down, listen. This is open to everyone who is willing to be a part of the atmosphere and be a part of God's body. So please come on. We can't wait. We're excited. Planning phases are already yes. Well, virtual well, air hug you. Go. We're gonna air hug you. But we can't wait to see you. We can't wait to see you. We love y'all so much. Once again, my name is Pastor Desmond Peacock. This is the Excelling Church Georgia campus where your life gets better from here. Until next time, we love y'all so much. Have a good one. God bless.